a number of years ago, a friend that I hadn't seen for a long time came to visit. He was a trained cellist and piano player, wonderful musician, and he had never had a chance to actually see a theremin up close and try it for himself. So we had a lot of fun messing around with it. After about 20 minutes, he, <laughs> he was through. He was done. He just went, ah, uh, ah. Uh. And he asked me this question. Why? Why would you consciously choose an instrument like this? He said, the theremin is the most unforgiving instrument on the planet. And he's right. The theremin is so sensitive that it is capable of amazing precision. And it's also that same sensitivity that makes it capable of horrific imprecision. And if you're someone who wants to play precision playing, really working on melodies for whatever type of music, then as a thereminist, we have to look at this in a far more honest way. And rather than being defensive about our techniques and the way we approach the theremin, it's best to admit the following. A thereminist who's working on precision playing spends a great deal of time either masking or compensating for the inherent limitations of the instrument itself. It is a very limited and limiting instrument. And we spend a tremendous amount of time making up for that fact in the way we play. The difference is we can either acknowledge it and go, well, there's nothing we can do, or we can acknowledge those limitations, acknowledge what we do almost as a matter of course, to make up for them and really turn them into techniques and choices. The first one is a really interesting challenge. Just take your hand after I'm done, try it yourself. Pause the video and try this. Put your hand in the control space and hold yourself as still as possible and maintain the pitch as perfectly as you can for as long as you can. Are you hearing the fact that even with micro-movements, I'm having to correct to stay on pitch? It fluctuates within a few seconds because it's impossible for us to hold absolutely perfectly still. Now, in the context of a song, when you're playing a melody, the rhythm dictates that you move at a certain pace and a certain speed and that you hit pitches at certain times. This can pose even more of a challenge for you because You've got to hit a pitch, hold it for the length of time that the melody dictates, and then move on. And your note, whether it's a long or a short note, is defined first by holding the note for whatever length of time, but also it is defined by the note that precedes it and the note that follows it. And your ear hears the note relative to what came before and what comes after. And that is what helps us to determine whether we just played on pitch or not. What do we do to compensate for this limitation that we can never hold perfectly still and that the small fluctuations in pitch can be discerned by a listener? This is where vibrato comes in. Why? Because vibrato is actually using the center of a pitch as your foundation and then allowing yourself to go slightly to the left of center and right of center. That is slightly flat and slightly and sharp. Consciously use vibrato. And our ears do something very unique. Have you ever looked at an impressionist painting, say a Monet water lily? When you get about a foot, a foot and a half away and look at it, it just looks like disparate brush strokes and smudges of paint. As you move back, the artwork reveals itself because your eye mixes the paint and you see what the artist intended in terms of an image. The same thing is happening with your ears. Vibrato mixes those pitches, the center of the pitch and the slightly sharp and the slightly flat, and we as human beings actually hear that as a single pitch when it's done right. That is something to really practice with using vibrato in the context of your melodies 
and when you get to longer notes. It's a cue as to when you can start using vibrato. So that compensation for fluctuations in pitch can really stand you in good stead.